Hey everyone, welcome to our Cyclocross Rankings show. I am Flow Bike Senior Editor Ian Dilly here with our Cyclocross Rankings guru, Molly Herford. Molly, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, our pre-nationals ranking show for the elite women. Uh, let's start with the under 23s, Katie Klaus and Clara Hansinger, you have marked as your two favorites. What have we seen from these racers over the last few weeks heading into nationals and what do you anticipate in Louisville? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's been great to see these two young racers actually winning UCI races against all of the elite women. Um, last weekend, we saw Katie Klaus winning Resolution Cross one of the days. I believe she was second the other day to Courtney McFadden. Clara Hansiger spent late November, early December over in Europe, though, racing the elite women at Tabor and Coxa. Tabor, not fantastic for her, but to be expected with a first European World Cup. Uh, Coxa finished 32nd. She beat some of the American elite women who were racing. She was pretty close to the a lot of the American women who were racing. She wasn't that far off of Ellen Noble or Katie Ant or Katie Keo. So she could be a really serious contender for the U23s. And important to note, she is racing uh, against the elite women as an under 23 in, in Europe, in Coxide, uh, you know, similar to as she does here in North America, except for Pan Ams. But still, I mean, gaining that level of experience, being, uh, you know, pushed um, by the best women in the world over in Europe, uh, what experience to bring back for U.S. Nationals. So Claire Hansinger, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see that battle between her and Katie Klaus. Let's move on to our top three American women, Katie Keogh, Katie Compton, and Ellen Noble. Surprising for as strong as these uh, three women started the season internationally with a win in Iowa City, second place in Waterloo, and Compton third at the World Cup in Bern. They have kind of been struggling or, you know, uh, maybe not racing as well as we thought they might have been over in Europe recently. Yeah, and to be honest, that's not a huge surprise historically. Um, because we start our season so early, they have to go out so hard with those first World Cups. There's a reason that we haven't seen any American men racing Tabor or Coxide. Because it's really hard to keep going that long into the season. So, I mean, props to the American women for showing up in Europe, first of all. Um, second, this is just not that surprising. It's just tougher with nationals in mid-December instead of being able to have that break heading into January. You've basically reset for the whole season. This time, they're sort of almost mid-season for a lot of them. And a lot of them will be heading right back to Europe, getting on the plane the day after nationals for the Christmas week. So, rough go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for someone like Katie Q, I believe this is, you know, she's going to make three trips across the pond this year. So uh, definitely a lot of travel for her. Um, let's get into what we saw recently from Katie Compton bleeding out of her eyeball at, at Cookside. I mean, this is a woman who has won 14 national championships, uh, multiple World Cups, you know, the best ever uh American cycle cross racer, yet she struggled with, you know, breathing issues, leg issues. I mean, for me, it's just inspiring that, to see her continue to perform, continue to push herself at this level with, you know, her own body sort of uh, battling against her. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you just don't really see that in all huge slam on like the really young racers out of nowhere from me here. There are very few, I'm going to say like under 20 year old racers who would be bleeding out of their eyeballs at the end of a race. You might get a couple of like almost vomiting, maybe like the occasional like slight faint, but to be bleeding out of your eyeballs, that takes so much pushing. So props to Katie Compton. And um, we've seen Ellen Noble uh, training down in Athens, Georgia. Do you know why she um, has kind of taken to Athens as her base for training ahead of nationals? Is it the proximity to Louisville? Yeah, it's a couple of reasons. Uh, it's part. It's where the Jam Fund, her team that she was on a couple of years ago, where a lot of her friends are from, you know, part of her hometown of Western Mass, it's where they go to train. So she's been able to ride with them for a couple of the days. It's also drivable from Western Mass. So it's only a 12 hour drive, 13 hour drive. So it's not as difficult as going out to say New Mexico or something. And yes, it's a lot closer to Louisville. So you can basically just jet right over there. There's 
you know, less flights, less travel time involved. So it's a really good choice. And the climate's going to be really similar to Louisville versus somewhere drier like New Mexico. So I think it's actually a really smart call. And Katie Compton has been back home in uh, Colorado Springs. Katie Keough with excellent results in Rhode Island over the weekend or a couple weeks ago. And let's um, go with our, our, our final picks here. There's been a lot of talk that this is the year that Katie Compton finally loses a uh, national championship. Her incredible streak ends. Ellen Noble just turned uh, 23 recently. Can this happen? Can Ellen beat Katie? She definitely can. It's going to be really, I think, hard for a lot of people to, you know, not see Katie win nationals because most of us who've gotten into cyclocross have only ever seen Katie Compton win nationals. So it'll be very strange. And that actually makes her harder to beat, in my opinion. The mental game that Ellen is going to have to bring to beat a woman who's had it for 14 years, like, She's just coming in with this, you know, intense need to have this amazing, perfect mental race in addition to, you know, keeping it together physically. So we'll see, you know, Ellen, Ellen definitely could win nationals if she has a great race and doesn't get in her head. And, you know, I have my fingers crossed. I would love to see Ellen win. I'll say that. But I also, it'll kill me to see Katie lose. So <laughs> it's going to be really <laughs> emotional for me. I'll say that. <laughs> Uh, well, I've got goosebumps. I cannot wait till Sunday. And thanks for being with us. And we will be back for a Nationals recap.